Michelle right. has brought in some uh, things that she gathered There's from two, around. Two things. I, two under, I, I recognize this. I recognize ginger. That's gingerbread. Oh, that's ginger. not the focal point here, though. This is not the focal point. No, that's the just only a, that's thing. Just Here's the reason I brought this up. On. This is the only thing I recognize on this table <laughs> right now, and you're going to make that's me consume true. some of these, right? I am. All we're right. talking about. What are we doing? Uh, we're talking about elder flowers and the purple cone flower and both of these grow abundantly in this area and the elder flower is what is pre elderberry so right oh, now okay. and right now is when these elder flowers are in bloom so if you let them go of course they're going to get the little berries on them so depending that on looks what like that. yeah then they'll start looking like this and they'll develop those beautiful deep bluish purple berries on them okay and then those are also um, edible and you can create wonderful syrups and jams and it's a it's a wonderful ber berry full of health benefits just like the elder flower now, where are these things growing where, where are we finding these? they're all I live out in the country I have them all over uh, my my yard and there's also they grow along the roadways okay so they really do grow and they, they are I don't want to say native to this area but they grow very well but here they're called in the elder flowers these are in this elder state. it's the elderberry okay. plant and this is what these are the flowers before the berries um, set so this is kind of something more of a novelty because remember if you cut if you harvest all of these then there aren't going to no be any no berries. berries so you want to be conscientious of that and the elder flower and the elderberry it's got lots of health benefits antibacterial antiviral um, helps with inflammation. It really, there's lots of health properties um, right. that go into these plants as well, especially the purple coneflower. So what do we do? So we, we just go along here's, and Here's pick, some fun pick, ways for pick, you to try the elderflower. Them? And the best time to harvest these is after a rain or a dewy morning because you don't want to rinse them off when you bring them in because they say that that kind of... Um, takes away some of the flavoring oh, of really? it. So, okay. but you want to, you know, get rid of the bugs and any debris and all of that kind of stuff. But best time to pick is always, you know, in the morning after a dew or even a best after a rainfall. Okay. Okay. Got it. And with this, we're only going to, we're only going to be using the blossoms, the flowers. So you have to okay? strip them off? So you want to um, avoid the stems, um, adding those to any of these just kind of, it can create some bitterness, the bigger stems. I still have some of the smaller stems that are attached to the flowers themselves. Those don't those seem are to okay. cause any problems, but um, the first one we want to talk about is an herbal tea, and herbal teas are so easy to make, and you can use um, the flowers either dried or fresh. If you use them dried, it's a couple of teaspoons for uh, about a cup of water, mm -hmm. hot boiling water. If you're using fresh, it's double that. Got it. So that's kind of your rule if you're using dry fresh to get versus more concentrated. dried. Okay. Exactly. Now, so exactly. What, you, what you're doing is you're just stripping the, the flowers off. Yeah, of and you just use your, yep, just and I just kind of, yep, just, and just pull like them that. off. See how they, they come off very nicely. Just real easy like that. Exactly. So that'd be considered. So you can you dry do. them, use them fresh. Okay. Um, I made a little batch of tea here for you, so I'm going to let you try it. And the elder flower has a really nice flavor to it. I never thought I would see what looks like a weed on the side of the road and then I'm going to be drinking <laughs> I a tea. I a lot make of people do it because they grow so readily. They're full of health benefits. That's the elderflower tea. And you can add a little bit of honey mm -hmm. or uh, some lemon to it. It's nice to mix it. in some other herbs. You can add some mints, some uh, lemon balm, lemongrass. That's, that's a, it's a, nice. It has you a good flavor. You can kind of taste the florally yeah, flavor, flavor to it. Yeah, it's a good flavor to it, yeah. OK, another way to use this is to create some flavored vinegars. So, Vinegar. Yeah, and you need quite a you need quite a few heads, flower heads, to mm -hmm. create um, to get a nice. Light. So f I filled the jar with the flower heads. It's probably about mm, three fourths of the way full. Get them packed in there, and then pour over the top. I use just a white wine vinegar. And then you're going to want to let this set. Um, I have the one of these jars was done last year, so it's been sitting all year. And then I'll. You know, I keep use I use a little bit of it. You keep here. adding more flowers. Do you keep adding more flowers. I to don't. I don't. Um, but the flavor just kind of starts to you know really get. And it won't go bad. No. Okay. No, it won't go bad. So I'm gonna let you try a little of this as well. But you want it before it's. Um, you don't have to let it sit for months. But they do recommend a good. Uh, six weeks. Okay. To get really let those flavors get into. Let the vinegar the get infused. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to strain out, and you'll just strain using and some the thing sort of is, a sieve. I, I've been drinking uh, apple cider vinegar. You're going to like this. No, I have in, uh, in the past couple of weeks. You know, based on things that we've talked about on this program. Oh, I'm going to do a shot of it. Yeah, and I'd probably do another filter with just putting some cheesecloth in there. But okay. just take a sip of that. It's really, really nice. And then you can use this for salad dressings. You can use it for marinades. See, I love. 
I love tart. And that's nice. And can that's you taste the floral that's yeah, in there? Yeah, it's sour, Pretty but intense. it has a really unique flavor to it. You can taste the flowers there. Yeah, exactly. And then another thing that you can do with it is make a cordial. I like this. And this is more or less um, a simple syrup. So basically what I did was I took the flower heads mm -hmm. and detached them from the stems put them in a bowl, and then I poured boiling water over the top of them and let them sit all night with a little bit of lemon zest. Really? Well, yes. what does that do? Yes, and then do? let that sit. Then what you'll do is in, you'll put that back on the stove and add a little bit of a sweetener. So you could use honey, you can use uh, sugar, and sweeten it up a little bit so you have a simple syrup. And then this is really nice to mix with. So what would you use this for If you're for, a then? cocktail drinker. Uh, just club soda? Just, uh, yep, add a little bit of club soda to this to give it a little sparkle. So this is just hot water, flour. It's just flour. You basically, a little bit of sweetener. you've infused, yes. So you put the boiling water, get all those flavors out into that water, strain it out, then add, cook it back up, add some sugar, some sweetener of some sort. I don't know if I drink this. I drink more of uh, this. I like I think. this. Really, I really I think, like that. I like that, that yeah. more than I like this. This makes but, a nice cocktail. But, but it, maybe if you had something else yes, to add exactly. to it. <laughs> Then you'd be in good shape. Okay. There you go. And then you can, of course, um, take the flour and you can make a fritter. This so, grows and everything, you know, you know, fried up is good. But this I just put, um, you make like a pancake batter, dip it in there and cook it just as you would a pancake. And then I'll cut, I use, I leave the stem on to cook it because it makes it easy to hang on to and then cut those stems away. So this is the whole flour that you just dipped in yes, there? Yes, and yep. And Seriously? It's really nice. Take a taste. Oh, Take a taste. Then we got to move on to the fair. purple cone flour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just break yeah, this it's a new. I I don't know why more uh, restaurants and things aren't using. There you can see the you can yeah, see we'll parts cut. of it. No, leave yeah. it there. Leave it oh, there. Okay. okay, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Trim the stem okay. off. See though. all that? Stem's kind of bitter. I'm gonna eat it. Okay. <laughs> can you taste the floral in there? Not really. No. Let me try this. Oh, it it you're gonna eat some more. All right. <laughs> Just a little different flavor to it. It isn't overpowering. Right, it's not mm -hmm. overpowering. And again, it's just kind of a novelty. It's a way to really celebrate but how the cool things is that, that grow that in our own backyard. You have this and you're, you're making a pancake out of it. Yeah. Okay, and then you have the stem on there too. All right, what else are okay, we doing? Okay, now the purple cone flower. This is very easy for a lot of home gardeners have this growing in there. It's very easy to start from seed. It spreads out. It's a beautiful perennial. And the entire plant is beneficial. So you can use the petals, the flowers. You can use the leaves. And you can also use the root for this. Okay. And this is echinacea. You've heard oh, of echinacea? Heard, everybody's heard of echinacea. So a company that puts out echinacea products, they can get 15 different products out of this one, one plant. plant. Wow. Yeah. So, right, so it's what a do, what beautiful do we do plant to use. You can, um, I like to take off all the petals and the leaves. And this, you can um, actually leave this, the seed head on the top of the plant, like trim all of that head. off yeah, while it's, it's out. Head. And then um, it may have the chance of reseeding instead of harvesting the entire okay. um, plant. So you can let these dry in a dehydrator, a low heat oven. Let me guess, you're gonna make a tea dry, out of it, right? Sun dry, so again, a nice herbal tea. Now this isn't, this is really more for health benefits. This doesn't have the greatest flavor to it. So this is the one you would wanna add maybe a little bit of ginger root to, or some lemon balm, maybe a little bit of, uh, Mint. See, I don't mind that at all. You, you like that oh, one? Oh, yeah. I, like, <laughs> well, I don't mind that here. one at all. <laughs> all right. It's very good for you. It's good for colds, flus, your good immune and system. Good for it's, a, it's a delicious okay. or a, a very beneficial tea. You can add it um, to oils and then create salves, a really nice salve. So really? this is submerged in just an avocado oil, uh, the leaves and the petals again. And then I'll add some, I'll let this sit for a good two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add, uh, strain it and then add a little bit of beeswax to it, maybe an essential make, oil. Make and you make a really it nice salve. Or a compressor. You can make tinctures by adding, uh, just submerging it in, just like we did with the vinegar except using an alcohol and alcohol then base. it's a very concentrated liquid form of that herb wow so, so all these different things the, yeah yeah and the salad spinner comes in handy when you clean the leaves and i'll wash everything off spin it off before you dry it or okay. use them it's very handy i probably use more use it more for that than i do actual salads like <laughs> but you can traditional create salads you can create all these different things with things that are probably right outside your yeah, door yeah right it's now. so nutritious that's the exciting part so that look for them cool. and uh, get some good books i recommend there's lots of great books on there on wild edibles here in the Midwest and they're coming very handy. So this is so. great but again how neat is that to, to get a flower, flower fritter and then you can just dip it in the batter <laughs> and then eat it. <laughs> when you fry anything it's good. <laughs> Stay tuned there's more to come here on Iowa Live.